Good morning, students. Welcome to our video lecture on Module 2, Lecture 4, Manufacturing of Fabrics and Molding Compounds. This is a part of the subject, Fabrication and Processing of Advanced Composites, ME61011, targeted for postgraduate students. I am Milan Jandas Chaklagar, Assistant Professor, Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. In this talk, we will cover what is a fabric, then the importance of the texture software, fibrous reinforcement forms, geometry of a plane weave structure, and different molding compounds such as sheet molding compound and bulk molding compound. Okay, coming to fabrics, so there are two types. Uh, there could be plain weave structure as well as the tool weave structure. Then there are other varieties as well. So here we are particularly looking into the carbon weaves, where you can see these are plain alternating strands, whereas in case of two-wheel weave, so there is a diagonal trend. Now this is an example of a sheet molded compound and these are other products made from carbon fibers. Now coming to the texture software. So this is a software which is developed by the University of Nottingham Composites Research Group. It is freely available. So the link is also there in the description. Please download the link and you can see the different orientations which have been, uh, used, which have been developed using a variety of uh, mathematical models. Also these you know, CAD geometries, these 3D geometries are very helpful if you are doing some kind of simulation work. And as you can see, sir, these are called in mesoscale. Why? Because in micro scale, we typically consider the fibers. In mesoscale, we talk about the bundle of fibers. Now, here in these three figures, uh, you can say that these are homogeneous bundles. So homogeneous bundles are nothing but in the mesoscale. And this actually helps to render for finite element analysis. Now coming to the fibrous reinforcement forms, a fabric cream. This is a terminology in case of fibrous reinforcements. A fabric crimp is a measure of yarn waviness. So, if you look into the cross section of the yarn, so there is a waviness, right? So, it goes like this, like this. So, and these are the cross section of the uh, yarns which is in the other direction, in the transverse direction. So, a fabric crimp is a measure of the yarn waviness. A yarn extracted from a fabric which is one meter wide will be longer than one meter. Why? Because when we are measuring the dimension of the fabric, we are talking about this dimension. But in reality, because of this waviness, obviously the yarns will be longer than this dimension. So that is a cream of 2% means the actual length of the yarn is 1.02 meters. Now, so these are uh, typically the production direction that is called as the warp direction and there is a weaving in the transverse direction we call it the weft direction. So this, this is plain weave. We saw a carbon structure just uh, before which is one by one because each one has an alternating uh, alternating up and down interlacing pattern. There is a basket weave so which is every two by two weave or it can be even more. Now coming to the fibrous reinforcement forms. So, 8 harness satin weave. So, why the number 8? So, uh, at the 8 point, there is the crossover. Why? See, let's take this example, the last one here. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. At the 8 point, there is a crossover. So, it's an 8 harness satin weave. Similarly, there could be interlinked multi layered fabric. What does it mean? It means just forget about the C yarn. Okay. Just imagine that there are two yarns A and B which makes the plane weave. Now, if you take another yarn and you just make it interlinked in the depth direction, so that becomes a multi layered one. So, similarly, A this is in the cross sectional direction, B is in this direction, in the longitudinal direction and C is in the depth direction. Okay, so again in case of fibrous reinforcement forms, we have already seen three types of weaves, basket, twill and satin. So what happens? The cream decreases from basket, from plain to basket to twill to satin. So this is the direction where the cream decreases. 
So when we say the cream decreases, so what does it mean? So again, if we go back to the 2% the cream example, which we have just seen. So if the cream decreases, that means in setting, even if we fi uh, try to find out the length of the yarn, that will not be very long or longer compared to the length of the fabric. So from plain to satin. Now drapeability or formability. How easily can you shape or form around the curvature? Okay. So for plain, it is difficult because it is one by one. This is one cross one. This is two cross two or more. This is twill. So maybe two cross one. This is satin. That means it's going to be seven cross one. So more and more there is flexibility or there is mobile, uh, formability, which is also called as drapeability of the yarn that increases in this direction. So what is movability? Obviously, if your drapeability increases, flexibility increases, the movability will also increase. So movability ensures less fabric integrity, hence increase is not acceptable. That means Say for example, you have a dome shaped structure which you want to make out of composite. Now if it is highly flexible, if it is highly movable, what will happen? When you drape it along this curvature, there, there will be more and more gaps between the between two yards. And you don't want that because in these with the gap increases, so here there will be more and more resin. That means if this becomes a resin rich area, so its structural integrity, its structural properties reduce. So that is not acceptable. Now coming to non cream fabric. What is non cream fabric? Or NCF? Non cream means there is no cream. So if it is non cream fabric, that means the dimension of the fabric that will be equal to the dimension of the yarns if the yarns are laid along the length or width or um, breadth of the fabric. Okay. So say for example, take this particular example, 90 degree yarns. Say I know this dimension. Okay. And this is the dimension of the fabric. But here, since these are par uh, laid parallel to this particular dimension or this particular di uh, direction, so this length will be same as the length of this individual yarns. So that is what is called here non cream fabric. So yarns are placed in together in layers and then stitched, very important, stitched using polyester threads. So if you try to look into this arrangement, this is very very similar to how sarees are made with the help of stitching process. So in a similar way you have the warp needles. This is the warp yarn and you simply stitch it. So this is moving in this direction and the stitching is just fixed here. So after the stitching is done the entire structure comes out. Okay. Now what is the advantage? The advantage is rapid layup of multi-layer reinforcement. Obviously stitching is fast. You can easily manufacture multi-layer reinforcements. Now coming to the knitted fabric. So this is more flexible fabric than woven. Why? See, you have more degrees of freedom. Isn't it? So when, it, when you say more flexible, what do you actually mean? Remember the word flexion refers to bending more flexible that means more bending can easily take the shape it can easily drape it can easily form it can easily move okay that's why it is more flexible fabric now another fibrous reinforcement form is typically called as braiding but try to understand whenever we say the word braiding we mean when a woman braids her hair, even without looking at it, how does it look like? This is, this is a very common phenomenon. So if we try to look here, so 
imagine there are three strands of hair taken out and there are the strands are basically uh, interlaced one over the other okay so now you have a middle strand you have a left one and you have a right one now this is how you are making the braid of the hair in a similar principle if you look into this figure so what happens see here also you have three strands one two and three so in a similar fashion very similar so the similar fashion you have you are braiding the yarns so these are the bobbins these three are the bobbins bobbins means it carries a spool of uh, yarns and then here you have the gear okay so as this braiding takes place so you get a braided structure all the way down all the way down you get a braided structure just very very similar to this okay now what if i put a solid shaft in the middle so the braiding looks like this right now in the middle if i put a shaft like this and then i carry out the same thing what will happen so this braiding will take place surrounding the shaft right surrounding the shaft it will the braiding will take place then i do all sorts of curing and resin infusion and i gently take off the shaft so i will get a cylinder where the inside is hollow but outside has been braided okay so this is one of the oldest textile methods and used for making ropes obviously you don't keep a shaft inside you will get a rope shoelace garden hose or any cylindrical or rectangular structures can be braided tubular braids are used for drive shafts okay and these braids may have a braiding angle of plus minus 45 degrees so obviously we can see the angle here so at any instant we get a 45 degree so either plus or minus now coming to the geometry of textile weave okay so this is just a cross section of a plain weave structure so what do we see here we'll take up one after the other so this is a cross sectional view of two yarns and this is a longitudinal okay so it's been interlaced so what is d d is the thread diameter where is d here there is no d here but there is d1 and d2 so d1 and d2 so what are they so d2 is the diameter of the cross sectional yarn d1 is the diameter of the longitudinal yarn h is the cream height so where is h again we don't see h properly here but we see h1 by 2 and we see h2 by 2 so what are these these are the cream height what is cream cream is the measure of waviness okay so from this point to this center point gives you the half of the cream height okay the next comes theta which is the weave angle in radians so where is theta simply this is theta okay so this is horizontal l is the modular length so which is again shown here as l1 by 2 okay so 1 and 2 typically these are the substricts denote which warp and weft threads then c where is c c is the cream so c is the cream being fraction so what does it mean it is a percentage so if i find out this whole path okay this whole path then divide it by this p2 so what do i get i get the cream so divide p2 p2 is divided by this entire way we uh, entire woven path so that means p2 divided by something greater than p2 gives the cream 
Okay, so P in terms of fraction. Now, this is typically called as the Pierce's model in 1937. This is a famous, uh, this is a very famous model. So this gives an idea how you can do all sorts of analysis in the cross section of the uh, plane wave. So for detailed geometry and mechanics of circular cross section, circular and other cross sectional waves, uh, you have one uh, link is there. This link will also be given in the description. Just go through the link. That means it, it is not always mandatory that this has to be circular. It can be elliptical. It can be a racetrack shape. It can be rectangular. Okay. So those things are important. The molding compounds, sheet molding compound. So this figure has been shown from IDI composites. So what happens here? Let's see. So this is a carrier film. There is some paste. There are chopped rovings. So typically these are chopped rovings of glass. Then there is a continuous strand roving. Okay. This is the chopper. So this chopper is actually chopping off the continuous strand roping into chopped rope. Okay. And what does it do? It is just dropping it on this carrier film. What is the other thing in the carrier film? Some bonding agent, which is the paste. Okay. So it goes until here. Obviously, then these are all the pulleys that we giving the motion. So again, so you have another carrier film, you have the same paste and it is coming from the top. So as if it is sandwiched. So now all the chopped glass rubbings, they are in the middle. Okay, now that you keep on compacting them or you're increasing the compaction stiffness, compaction strength, there is a gauge, you measure the thickness and then there is a phase tuner where you lay up all the sheet molded sheets okay so these are typically used for automated class a body panels high strength electrical parts okay now these are thermoset based compounds so whenever we speak about sheet molded compounds we have to keep in mind it is thermoset based you have discontinuous or alternatively continuous but randomly arranged fibers. The sheet is allowed to mature for 48 hours. What does it mean? Remember, you are using a paste. So the paste has to cure itself. Okay. So that bonding agent is kept for 48 hours to mature. And typically the fiber volume fraction we come across is 28%. Okay. It's not a very high fiber volume fraction. So what is the alternative to these chopping fibers? You can just use a chopped strand max. So rather than gluing it, rather than adding paste, you just use a chopped strand mat. So chopped strand mat. So coming to the bulk molding compounds. That is BMC. So you have a resin paste, you have filler, you have chopped glass, you add them all together, then put them in the hopper, then with the help of an extruder, which is a screwing arrangement, you soften it and finally you make the part based on the mold. So you may also have an extra portion here once you take this green part out and that it has to be removed, it has to be ground off. Coming to the bulk molding compound, so there is thermoset based compounds, filler content is higher than fiber content. Okay. Then fiber volume fraction is 0.2. Remember for sheet molding compound it was 28% but this is only 20%. It, was a, it is a viscous putty like injection molding compound. Okay. So the moment it says putty like you can understand what is the texture of that mixture. Okay. So application widely used for injection molded parts, housing and body panels. So summary. All the links to examples and applications are provided in the description below. Please go through them carefully. Hope you have enjoyed this video lecture. Thank you.